All right there, YouTube. How you doing? It's doing stuff with TNA. I'm Travis. Amy is in the garage, and we've got a bit of a some fun to do today. I think fun anyway. So I got a couple of packages in. So I got the Cut 60 Prime Weld Plasma Cutter. I got the MIG 200 uh, that also does stick, and I got the TIG 225X ACDC TIG welder. So I'm pretty psyched. We're gonna start unboxing these. Now this is the Cut 60. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. It has been a long time since I've worked with plasma cutters and welders. We've got the NEMA 6-50 plug on this unit. Let's see what accessories it came with. So we've got our torch cable. Some pieces, parts in here. And what else we got? A nice size ground clamp, some pieces, you know, one of those cheap welding helmets, and a 110 to NEMA 650 adapter, and I'm not sure what that is offhand. That's everything in that box. All right, we got the manual. Now, the reason I bought this unit is Prime Weld's well known three year warranty over any other unit, and they're America based. I did look at buying Everlast, but being Canada-based for parts, getting parts expensive, especially if they have to send you multiple things. So that's why I, in the end, went with Prime Weld. Lots and lots of stuffs. Air pressure gauge, regulator, torch connector, uh, ground, amp control, air post, 2T, 4T trigger lock, airflow function, over current light, amp display. I'm just trying to see if they got something for all the accessories. The only thing I'm not seeing that I didn't see anywhere in here was the air hookup, air hose hookup piece. So I'm going to need one of those. We will move along to the next box. Let's open this bag, see what's in there. So, handle for the helmet, this brush, the plate, and I guess the back of that. So, nothing in there I need for the moment. That's what that other connector is. I'm not sure about that one. Gonna have to figure it out. Next box. Nice packaging. This is the MTS 200 welder, MIG and stick, and it also does TIG. I don't care about the TIG function on it because it's a really basic TIG function. Lots of foam. Nice pieces of foam too. There's the unit. It also has a NEMA 650. Let's see what accessories we've got here. Standard in TIG welding. We've got a TIG torch. This is your standard CK17 VFX. Cap, short cap. Nice heavy duty connections. We've got our ground cable, another nice heavy duty cable. 
hours. Man, that's a that's a pretty solid stinger. That's got a strong spring in it. We've got our NEMA 6-50-110 adapter again. Some hose connections. And a, a Go Plus 15 torch, Tweeco 3M. There is another tip in it. And finally, now this MTS 200 welder, it does not, it is not on their Amazon site. And the reason for that is you have to have so many in stock to have it on Amazon. So they don't have, they sell this unit so fast they can't keep it enough in stock. So you have to buy this one direct from Prime Weld. But these others, the TIG 225 and the Cut 60, I did get off Amazon primarily due to the ease of returning them, but also because I have a 5% back credit card. Regulator for, for your gas, and an adapter. I'm not going to be using that right offhand. I have some flux core. That's what I'm going to use get started nothing else in the box this is way more equipment than I need let me tell you what I may have went overboard but things were getting hard to get all right so this is the prime weld tag 225 ACDC also very well boxed there's quite a foam box there This thing's got so many settings, it's going to be intimidating for a while because I've just not done much TIG. And it also has the NEMA 650 plug. This box of accessories. Another TIG gun. Let's see if it's the same one as the other one. If it is, I'm not going to unbox it. CK1712S. CK17V12. No, a little bit different. Let's see what's different. CK17FX, I mean, nothing different with that. CT, CXT V, no, CK17FX. That's a CK17V. This is a CK17. I don't know what the difference is. I don't really see a difference. Press here. I don't know. Well, then we have, this looks like the cord for the pedal. Another 110 to NEMA 615. I got three of these now. Guess I won't ever run out. Some TIG parts. I bought a bunch of accessories already. And another regulator. This one looks to be a little bit different. Another one of those helmets. These will be good for wheeling. Trail fixes, put a strap on it. We got another ground cable. Another gas line. Another stinger. Apparently this also does stick welding. And the pedal. I guess that cable wasn't for the pedal. I don't know what that other cable was. Maybe. Oh, this looks like a finger version of the... I don't know. i to figure that out. It looks like the pedal. It's just different. So, yeah. We got quite a bit of toys here. Let's take them to the garage and we'll start with the MIG and the... Because I don't have any gas. I do have, uh, do have air for the plasma cutter, but I don't have any gas for the MIG or the TIG. So if I dig it, it puddles of gas. But let's go play with the MIG. 
So I also picked up this ESAB, ESAB Savage A40 Auto Darkening Helmet. Four sensors, true color, grind button, ergonomic headgear, delay, sensitivity. Let's take a look, see what we got. And I've got two of these helmets, one for me, one for the wife. Some extra glass, quite a manual. Let's see what we need to do here. Remove film before using. It's got some lights for low battery. It's got the sensitivity and delay options right there. There's the grind button, sensitivity options. Actually, sensitivity and button for grind. That front plastic is just protecting the shield. That's a little bit scraped, but that's fine. Let's remove this film. I have to take it out to remove the film. Take it out to figure out how the thing works anyway. All right, so it's got that cable there to the battery compartment here. Now that's out of the way, I should be able to remove this plastic fully. There we are. Alright, I'm just going to put it back in place. Let's see if the battery is in it. There is a battery in it. There you can see pretty clearly. And you can see pretty clearly through that without the helmet, with the helmet. All right guys, so I'm gonna go over some details of this MTS 200 welder. It will take both two pound rolls and 10 pound rolls. It has this adapter to use 10 pound rolls. So what you do is there's a nylon washer and then another little washer, then a spring, and then a nut. It comes with this already on. This cap unscrews, then you access the nut, and, and this is what holds the spool on. Then you take that off, then you can put this back on with the smaller spool. So what I've got is 0 .030 flux core. So I need to put on this knurled roller. It comes with a 0 .25, 0 .3035 solid roller, a 30 and a 40 knurled roller, and then the roller that's in it, which I'm not sure offhand. And you can get, these are standard rollers, they said, you can get others. It has this little chart in here, tells you exactly what's what. Now the MIG gun comes with an 030 tip already in it. They give you a second O3 and they give you, that's the second O3, and then they give you an O4. This little tool and this little tool. So I gotta figure out, thank you, take this screw off to get that. I um, just wanna confirm before I try too hard. And if you've not done MIG welding before, you want the spool to unwind this way. So it should be feeding from the bottom into it. That way it doesn't flow like this and kink up on you. Here's a picture of the spool washer tab, washer spring, and nut. Don't tighten these too tight. Most, everything here is plastic except for the spring. Even the nut's plastic, so be careful with that. The instructions also give you some information about how to connect. If you're using flux core, you want to connect the feed into the negative terminal. You want to ground positive, and then your MIG gun goes to here. Let's go ahead and do that. Feed negative. All right. So you've got this flat spot here and you're going to want to have it facing that way. Easy way to tell is the screw here will face up or down, whichever way. So you unscrew this and then you can insert this all the way in and you want to get it all get it all the way in there 
now you can tighten this screw up to hold it in. Now you've got your control, the notch goes down, plug that in, screw the ring on so it stays in there. That's your wire feed control. All right, now to change the roller, you're gonna wanna get this knob loose, then unscrew this. This is the feed tensioner. Pull it down, that will pop up. Finish taking this off. Take the roller out. So this is a 0 0.40 and a 0 0.30. So this one says 0 0.04 on that side, and it's clearly the wider groove. This one says 0 0.03 on this side, but the other side's clearly the smaller groove. This one's clearly a bigger groove than that one, so yeah, pay attention to that. Those numbers are a little screwy. All right, so it's got a, a keyway. Just line that keyway up. It'll go in and screw it on. Put that down, that back up. Now they say between two and three on the tensioner for this kind of uh, for flux core wire. Why am I doing flux core? Because I don't have gas right now. I gotta get some gas. That's actually the reason I bought this spool so that I could test this thing out without having gas. So now we need to try to feed this wire into here. Uh, I've got some kinks in here. You wanna cut those off and then feed 12 inches worth into here. So to install it says loosen the wire feed mechanism screw. Ensure the gun's fully inserted. No o-ring should be visible, which you don't see one. Tighten the knob securely. That would be this. Okay, so leave this open until you have the wire fed through. Okay, so I cut the kinked end off. I'm gonna feed it through. We wanna hold onto this pretty tight and it get that. Oops, see, the wire will unwind easily. Trying to do this one-handed. Let me wind this back up real quick. All right, so I've got that fed through. Now I'm gonna try to push about 12 inches worth through here. Probably about six there. That should be 12. Screw this down between two and three. Close this. And we'll be ready to start welding as soon as plug it in. So now I'm gonna put in the negative. She's plugged in. And now I just gotta figure out how to set it. So we've got a set of welding gloves. These are extra large, supposedly. They are tight. Anyway, my first welding project is this saw blade. I've cut this pieces out of it. And what I'm making is a paper mulcher out of this old junk saw blade.